just a trace of DNA, a person's genetic code, can tell the police who committed a given crime, even when there are no witnesses, no fingerprints, no other clues. And the police can get that DNA at a crime scene from just a drop of blood or saliva, a strand of hair, even a flake of dandruff. Then, as with a the fingerprint, they run it through a DNA data bank to see if it matches anyone already on file. If it does, bingo. The police want DNA from more people in data banks so they can identify more criminals and solve more crimes. One of America's data bank pioneers is Dr. Paul Ferrara, who opened the country's first DNA data bank in the state of Virginia 10 years ago. It's just astounding what the power uh, of this technology, mm -hmm. when properly and fully implemented, is going to do for the public safety. But as the technology has developed, so has the debate over whose DNA should be in data banks. At first, the state of Virginia took DNA only from convicted sex offenders, but officials decided that was not enough after the case of Timothy Spencer. Before Spencer raped a dozen women and murdered five more, he had been convicted only of burglary. If DNA from burglars had been in a data bank, then Spencer could have been identified after his first rape, and that could have prevented his next 16 attacks. That's exactly right. If you limit yourself just to violent offenders and sex offenders, you're missing out on half of the power of this technology, at least. So now Virginia takes DNA samples from all convicted felons, and Ferrara says that has cracked lots of rape and murder cases. In about 60% of those cases, the sample that we had in the data bank came from an earlier burglary or breaking and entering conviction. Mm. So it certainly justifies the inclusion of property crimes into the data bank. Two victims of violent crime, Debbie Smith on the left and Kelly Green, were raped. And Kelly Green says she would not have been raped if Florida had DNA from all felons in its data bank because her attacker already had several convictions. He has a lengthy record of previous burglaries, um, previous drug possessions, and if they had collected from all felons, he would have been in the system. Uh, three weeks before my attack, he raped another woman, and he would have been caught right after that rape and been put in prison. But Florida and more than 30 other states still take DNA for data banks only from people convicted of certain violent crimes. And even with a limited sampling, America has amassed an enormous backlog of DNA from crime scenes and from convicts that had not yet been entered into data banks a backlog of some 450,000 convicted offender samples that have been taken but not analyzed. Why? Money, resources. Uh, the states pass laws, but many of these states haven't received the funding to actually allow them to develop and implement the technology to run them. Getting a DNA sample into a data bank costs about $100, but Dr. Ferrara says that data banks can pay for themselves by cutting crime, plus cutting the time police spend investigating it. So he says the backlog is actually contributing to crime. If we could snap our fingers mm -hmm. and have that database, that backlog of uh, convicted of felon samples, and all that crime scene evidence analyzed today, that would be thousands of crimes that wouldn't be committed tomorrow. It may not have prevented my rape, but it definitely would have prevented two cases that happened after me, and it would have also given me six years of my life back. I feared for my life for six years because nobody knew where he was. Her rapist had been in prison for years for other offenses, but she did not know that. Because of the backlog, it took six years to match his DNA to her rape. And Kelly Green told us how crucial it was to have her attacker identified this sense comes over you that whew, I, ha I can let down my guard. I don't have to f study the faces in the crowd trying to figure out, is it him, is it him? Is he watching me, is he hiding? Is he following me still? Is he still attacking other women? Sure. It gives you closure and you're able to go on with your life. For me, DNA is already done, and, and for Kelly, it's already done what it was set up to do. It gave right. us our lives back. Mm -hmm. For the first time in six and a half years, I could feel myself breathe again. All 50 states have voted to build DNA data banks, but here in rainy Boston, the Massachusetts data bank has been shut down by a lawsuit filed by former prisoners 
who claim that forcing them to give their DNA to a data bank is an unconstitutional search and seizure. I have a fundamental right to be left alone. Dwight Harrison and Don Landry joined the suit that shut the Massachusetts data bank. Landry is a convicted killer. Harrison served time for attempted murder. Both men had been out for years when the state asked for their DNA and they refused. I'm already labeled as criminal. And by taking my blood, put me in a database, I, I will forever be in their computers. I can never walk away from this. My debt's never paid. And even those that aren't liked uh, have rights. There are those looking in who say to you, hey, come on, you gave up a certain amount of your freedom when you attempted murder and robbed, or when you murdered. Sure, but I mean, you earned it back when you, when you got, when you got your freedom. But many victims believe that if you choose to commit a crime, you may not be entitled to all that freedom. We had no choice. They took our rights from us, and now they have relinquished those rights. Massachusetts is appealing the ruling that closed its DNA data bank. Courts in 10 other states have ruled that states can take DNA from convicts. And across the Atlantic, the British have been taking DNA for years and not just from convicts. Here in windy England, you don't have to be convicted. You don't even have to be arrested for the police to get a sample of your DNA. The police can demand a sample from anyone who is merely suspected of a crime that could put him in prison. For instance, shoplifting or even crank calls. And almost everyone here thinks that is just fine because DNA matches are solving so many crimes. Fact is, Britain's data bank is so big that when they run a crime scene's DNA through it, the data bank comes up with a suspect in one out of every three cases. It's so successful because most criminals are repeat offenders. America's national data bank system is just beginning. Only 12 states are linked up to search each other's data banks. Meanwhile, England's data bank is solving more than 600 crimes every week. And taking DNA from suspects in minor crimes can eventually solve major crimes, according to England's DNA manager, Leslie Busher. There was a 46-year-old woman who had been raped quite viciously. Within 48 hours, that crime stain was loaded onto the database, and it matched a suspect who was already on the database. For? He was actually sampled on suspicion of having committed a burglary. But if he hadn't been arrested and sampled on suspicion of that burglary, the police might well have not got him so quickly. The British take a DNA sample with a quick and painless scrape inside one cheek. More DNA in more data banks would solve more crimes. So why is the president of the American Civil Liberties Union, Nadine Strawson, against data banks? Because they violate the privacy rights of Americans. We should keep the government off our backs. I certainly think that would extend to keeping the government out of our cheeks and out of our genetic codes. Who I am, my biological potential, um, my health situation, my paternity, my race, all of these things that can be revealed through genetic testing is not the government's business. Now, the fact of the matter is, for uh, these DNA data banks, we specifically have chosen genetic locations that allow us to identify an individual, but tell us no information whatsoever about any medical, physical characteristics or traits. But Strauss encounters that if the government examined your DNA more thoroughly, it could learn a lot about you. I think what this comes down to is government officials saying to us as individuals, well, we know we could use this information to put together a complete profile of you, but we're not going to trust us. I'm sorry, but our Constitution is based on the premise that you cannot trust government with your most profound personal secrets. Secrets such as what diseases you are likely to get. And if that information were leaked to insurance companies or employers, Strassen says, they could use it to deny you insurance or a job. But to Dr. Ferrara, that is another false alarm. 
I'm going to be in jail if I uh, release any information to, of our data bank to any individual. And the samples themselves are maintained in a very highly secure environment. So there are protections, very solid protections, against the misuse of DNA data banks. No matter what laws are in place restricting access, those laws are always violated or off regularly violated. We've seen, again, you know, IRS employees rifling through people's tax records for illegitimate purposes. And Strawson fears that if the government can take DNA from convicts today, then the government might want DNA from all of us tomorrow. But some crime victims say that's just fine with them. After all, nobody objects to doctors routinely taking a blood sample from infants at birth to test for diseases. So why not also take their DNA for a data bank? I would absolutely oppose that. Because? Because I don't think the government is entitled to a complete genetic profile of me. Why do you call England's DNA data bank a nightmare? It's a nightmare to me, Mike, because it is so far-reaching. They haven't lived a nightmare until they have lived through a violent crime or until someone that they know or love has lived through a violent crime who has been on the edge of fearing for their life. Even with those fears, am I willing to give up my freedom and privacy to the government because it might detect a rape, or many rapes for that matter, that have been committed, which is the lesser of the two evils. This past week, the Massachusetts Supreme Court reopened that state's data bank, ruling that the minor intrusion of a blood test is outweighed by the strong state interest in solving or preventing crime.